Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today it's into the big one, Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. This is our Let's Play against the Soviet AI, and it is now February 28th, the last day of February 1943. We are on turn 89, and so we've probably had a couple of units uh, that have left the map. When I left you last time, we had just resolved the combat for February 21st to the 27th. It is now the 28th. And so let's go take a look here. Um, we'll talk more about what's come on the map. I did that a little bit last time. Oh, by the way, I want to say thank you to everyone for the support. We are now about to pass 5,000 subscribers. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, the channel's really only been going for a little over a year, so I really appreciate that. I'm glad you like the videos. All I care about is that you uh, get out and play these great games and enjoy them yourself. And, uh, you know, like the videos if you actually like them. Subscribe if you haven't. I would appreciate it. Uh, if you want to be a member, uh, feel free to do that as well. Um, I was going to live stream today. We just, I can't fit it in. Uh, so I decided, you know, I'm going to put up a video. I'm going to try to go two days on, one day off uh, for the foreseeable future and crank the rest of this game out so we can get a good play by email going on. Um, we will be live streaming tomorrow. That'll be 3 o'clock Pacific. Uh, what is that? Wednesday the 16th, I believe, of February. So anyway, uh, let's get going and just take a look at what happened last time. Like I said, we'll go look at the reinforce. Well, I say reinforcements. They're actually units we brought in from the reserve. Uh, and they will be down by Warsaw. So we've got a lot of divisions in. Now, they're not coming in full strength. Uh, most of them have... I'm going to say around two-thirds strength. I mean, we'll take a peek at them, certainly. But, uh, you know, we got to get them back out on the map. We'll go back and look at the reserves, see what else we may want to bring back on the map for next turn uh, here in a minute. So we'll check that out. Um, friendly losses. Last time we lost about 10,500 men, 218 artillery, 92 armored fighting vehicles, and 23 aeroplanes. Uh, but on the map, because we did bring so many things back in from the reserves, we gained 20,000 men on the map. Now, some things withdrew. There was a lot of netting here, right? We lost 10,500 men uh, through casualty. We had several units that left the map, and we brought several units onto the map. We put it through the blender, and we end up with 20,288 additional troops on the map. Hey, we've outdone uh, the Soviets two turns in a row. How exciting is that? Uh, we did add 203 artillery pieces. Of course, the uh, Soviets add 778. 110 AFBs leave the map for us. I think we, you know, we had a motorized division that I know left. Uh, maybe an armored division did as well. Um, the Soviets gain 105. We gain 14 aircraft. We're still sitting with just a massive number of aircraft in our reserves. Uh, the Soviets added 132. Our logistics look a lot better. We've talked about that in the previous episodes. You know, debate what that is. Obviously, a big part of that is just the fact our line has gotten pushed so far back that it's almost natural that our logistics have to be better. We're, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we're closer to the fatherland. So, uh, we're going to have a better time getting freight out to our troops, even in the, the winter. And it is snowing out here, and we'll go take a look at it. The most important number in the game is right here. The Soviets have 511 points. They need 525 on April 1st. So it's actually on the date when they do the test. Uh, they need that to get a sudden victory. We're trying to hold that off because that would then jump up to, I believe it's 575 and it is. Yeah, and you can see here are the check dates. April 1st, 43, turn 94, they need 525. Then that jumps up a nice 50 points. I mean, the way we're uh, cooking right now, the Soviets get about 16 points for any town they take, for the most part. I mean, unless it's like Sevastopol. Uh, and because of that, we could give up three more of those 16-point towns before July 1st of 43, turn 107, and still be hanging in the game. 
then the October check, okay, 600, 650. I mean, it starts to really rise, right? So this is the most important check. If we can get past this one, I think we've got a, I think we got a fighter's chance. Uh, we'll see if we can do it. Uh, I hope, God, I hope so. Uh, I really want to win this game the first time through. Oh, it was brought up about the difficulty level. Yeah, we did start on normal. Now, I had started practicing elsewise on a uh, Soviet campaign um just playing through to you know because when we do the play by email uh, i'm planning on playing the soviets and so i'd started doing that and i think i bumped up the difficulty to challenging for that one and maybe that was the confusion now i don't know if i just have my game naturally set on challenging if it flips over to that or if it'll stay at where it what we had it set when we started this game uh Meaning, you know, is it kind of a big universal what your difficulty level is? My, I'm going to suspect that we're still on normal here. So sorry if I misspoke on that one uh, because I looked at it right before the last video. Uh, but thanks for checking on that, Nord. Okay, let's, uh, you know, we kind of looked at this last time. Let's go look at the order of battle. You can see here 2.37 million for the Germans. Nearly 300,000 troops in the reserves. Total forces 5 million. Well, uh, you know. This, you know that includes reserve boxes, right? Uh, we don't we don't get uh, those out here on the Eastern Front. The Soviets have 5.78 on the map. It's saying only 7,000 in reserves. Okay, uh, our Axis allies almost a million men, uh, especially when you add in the reserves here, about 963, 964, something like that. Okay, I mean, we've got a severe manpower shortage uh, when compared to the Soviets. Uh, overall losses, we're now 3.25, let's call it, three and a quarter million men. Uh, the Soviets, nine, almost 9.9 .9 million. They should cross over 10 million here in the next few turns. Just incredible, you know, three to one on the gun losses, uh, close to four and a half to one or so on the AFV losses. But it doesn't matter, as we'll see when we look. Oh, let's look at production. Let's look at production. Um, and you can see here, uh, the Germans have 68,000 men in the pool. Built, they've built 720,000 men. Uh, it's like an AI army. Uh, Finland, okay, the Finns, 37,000 in the pool, 49. You know, the Axis allies have a decent amount of men in the pool. Uh, as the Germans here, we're constantly dipping into that. We need to dip into it even more, uh, certainly. Um, let's see. Let's go to the charts. And like I said, most important number in the game. Now, this keeps kind of dialing back, right? I mean, but it would take three more points of the Soviets losing it to allow us to lose a 10 or a 10 plus six town, a 16 point town and stay alive. So I've, we're not going to count on news events getting us there. Certainly, um, if we go down here, let's go to losses and, you know. The Soviets continue to, you know, have about 40 to 45,000, maybe 30 in here. Uh, we continue way down here, you know, 10, 11, 15, somewhere in there on uh, manpower losses, gun losses. You know, they lose 500 plus every turn. doesn't matter. Uh, they just keep cranking them out. Same thing with AFVs, you know, they're losing 600, 700 a turn. doesn't matter. Total aircraft losses. Eh, there wasn't much aircraft activity last time. Let's look at map men, and you can see that went vertical, but now is leveled off a little bit anyway. We were slowly fading away, and now we've kind of leveled off. Um, you can see the difference, though. 5.78 to 3.32. Map guns, well, this, you know, tells a tale, certainly. Uh, it's better than 2 to 1, uh, 2 and a quarter to 1, something like that. 31,000 to almost 71,000. AFVs on the map, 10.5 here for the Soviets, 3,000 for us. And aircraft, you know, we've got a lot in the reserves. This would probably be about 3,000, so it's about 2 to 1. I would suspect uh, we're going to have to trap a lot of Soviets at some point. I don't think that comes as a shock to you. Weather on the ground. It's all heavy snow out here, and that's, uh, 
you know, in some respects, maybe slowed the Soviets down. It's probably definitely slowed their logistics, uh, which seems to be the major problem that they're having on the map of pushing a bigger offensive. Uh, they've got a lot of counters out there that are showing a low supply situation, so that's good for us. Although the Soviets do still fight better in the winter, uh, once the springtime comes, we'll get some mud. Hopefully, we'll have three or four turns off uh, to where everybody can rest up. Um, we can, you know, rebuild even more units potentially. We've already rebuilt several, uh, but we've got a lot more that are still in bad shape. And then we can launch some kind of late spring, early summer offensive. That would be the plan. Let's look at the weather in the air. You see the blizzard right over the center of the map. Uh, and then we have another blizzard up to the north. It's not on the playing field, but uh, maybe maybe it will be. We'll see. Yeah, well, it kind of extends down here uh, by Leningrad and uh, it just in the very north, right? Um, right up here. And, uh, okay, so, you know, more blizzard. It's just still more snowfall everywhere. It is a Soviet winter. Uh, was that a song in the 80s? Maybe it should have been. I don't know. Uh, you know, by the band Chernobyl. It's a Soviet winter. Uh, okay, I'm not going to sing to you this time. You guys didn't pay extra. Uh, okay, let's get off the charts then and go check out. Well, let's go down here and look at what came on the map. So down here at Warsaw, and I'll just take the logistics off for a moment. Down here at Warsaw, you can see, you know, 11,000 men. It comes back on at 67 ready. Okay, I mean, you know, 11,000, 67 ready. Uh, almost 11,000, 68 ready. So all of these are looking pretty similar. 68 uh, with around 11,000 men. They come back on not very well fed. Uh, I've got a gripe with my... Uh, Whoever's running the mess hall in Warsaw, I'll tell you that, <clears throat> because these guys often come on without having eaten very much, like 47%. Why is that? I mean, we're shipping them in out of the reserves. Get them a home-cooked meal before you get them out here to Warsaw. Uh, well, I don't know. That's just how it is, and that's what we're going to have to deal with. So we've got that here. There's nothing back here by Berlin. That's OKL. Uh, by the way, OKL... Let's flip that up to supply priority two and then back down to a one. I've been really shortchanging my air assets, but that's all right. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of air on the map. I just wanted to make sure they were all one. Um, okay, let's go to the reserves and see what we got going on here. Uh, I think we need another headquarter unit out here. We've got, this is a 60. Who's in charge? Ernst Highway to hell! All right, my guy. Uh, seven, six, five, and a seven. Let's get Ernst back on the map because we may need something. Now, he has no support units right now. As a matter of fact, eh, let's not do that. Let's lock it, uh, or we could put it on zero. <clears throat> Either way, let's set his supply priority to a two. Um... But let's put him back on the map next turn because we have a lot of infantry coming out here. So off goes 12th Corps, I believe. And then who's 2nd Corps? Uh, Lengerman und Erlenkamp. Okay, wow, that's very uh, Prussian. Von, Leng Von Lengerman und Erlenkamp. Okay, uh, he's 104.46. Um, I'm sure you're really happy I tried to pronounce that twice. I think we'll keep this back here. I wanted him to maybe build up a little bit more. We could also move the Mountain Corps back here. That's Brandenburger. Ah, Brandenburger's a good general. Why don't we uh, move that back out as well then? Locked here. It's got nothing right now. Take it down to a supply priority two, and we'll put Brandenburger back out on the map. Uh, okay, there we go. And then let's look at our armor here. Well, not looking great, certainly. Uh, the 18th Panzer Division, 44. Hungarian armor wants to get back on the map. Let's uh, oblige them uh, because they're ready for a scrap, as many Hungarians are. 20, 28, 0, 0, 25. Uh, okay, none of that looks great. I mean, we could put one of these on refit, but I don't want to shortchange what's on the map. Now, they're, this is going to get priority anyway. Um, but I don't want to give them priority on top of priority. Uh, the motorized unit, the 18th, nope, not ready. 
Then we have a lot of these 66, 68s. It seems that that's what everything is rebuilding to, but we've got to get things off the map here. Now, these came back, gosh darn it, I had them on. Now, that's a good point, okay? And before you guys yell at me, before we put these things in the reserve, we need to make sure they're not on refit. How can you tell they're on refit in the reserve? It's this green triangle right here. Well, these things rebuilt. They came back during this turn, but I can't put them back on the map until next turn. Bad, bad generalship. Uh, don't do that. Always check and see if they're on refit before you turn the turn. That's part of uh, my downfall as far as uh, streaming is sometimes, you know, I got to move a little bit here, right? I just can't uh, dig down here every time. And uh, I forget this every once in a while. Now, I, you know, Sarge has pointed that out a couple of times. Good job, Sarge. Uh, but now this is rebuilt. Now it's just sitting here, right? These had rebuilt a little bit last time. Same idea, or these three. I'm going to go ahead and put these back on the map and get start getting some of this crap out of the reserves because, as I said, they're getting priority back here. We've got units on the map that need you know, some of these uh, replacement parts, so to speak. So let's get that back out on the map. Um, anything, you know, above 65, let's say. Bunch of 49s back here. These three can come next time because I evidently I've already rebuilt them. Gosh darn it. 69, 69, 88. Okay, well, they'll come back next time. And any of these that build up a little bit as we keep trying to empty the reserves, right? So we can build up things that are actually on the map. Anti-air, same old problems back here. We're just not, you know, these things just aren't building uh, very well. I think we're going to go one at a time with these. And let's start with this, uh, the Gehring uh, Luthwaffe Light Flak Battalion. Let's turn that refit on. And we'll start trying to take them out one at a time. Uh, or maybe two? Nah, let's just do one at a time. Uh, Mo Mountain Infantry, 49. No, nope, can't take that out. 10, 30, okay. And we're not going to take any planes out for obvious reasons. Uh, there's a blizzard on the map. Doesn't seem wise. Now, after this this blizzard uh, group goes through, I do think that we will start taking some planes back onto the map. Hey, it's 1943. What are we saving them for? You know, joy rides uh, after uh, Soviet occupation? Probably not going to, you know, help us uh, if we let this get to 44 or 45. Some of those are older planes, older models and whatever. So, you know, what's the point of just holding them in, in the reserves? Now, I don't want to throw them away in the middle of a blizzard, but... That being said, uh, you know, at some point we got to move them out and that'll be when the next blizzard passes or the next big snowfall, which maybe now we'll see. I mean, we're almost into March. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but maybe by the middle of March, we're going to start bringing all of that aircraft back on the map. Now, having it back in the reserves serves two purposes. And the reason I don't want to move it back you know, super fast is because the first purpose, of course, is that there is a blizzard. And so, you know, we'll take more operational losses and whatnot. But the second one is, is they eat up, you know, they eat up freight out here that we need for our ground units. Now, you saw I had OKL on a one. And so they're going to, you know, not get priority, but they're still going to take some and we need all of the freight to our ground units we can get. All right, uh, let's go around and look at the air units we currently have on the map. So we're showing operational air groups, but the way I want to do this is do it Luftwaffe one. And when we do that, we should see all of them because you're going to have things that aren't in an AOG potentially and if that's true you want to assign them to an AOG you want to give them that command I should have all of that worked out now now you can see the only thing that's really right up at the front are these dive bombers and we got like 40 of them here in STG 77 you can see they're the JU 87Bs the Stukas uh, there okay so that's STG-77, and then we've got JG-51, which should be fighters, and they are the 109F4s. Got 53 of those. Okay, that's a decent number, right? So we can we can do some bombing here. Uh, oftentimes, I won't have the ground support on offensively at this point, uh, but if once we're getting attacked during the Soviet turn, 
they can help us out on the battlefield. Plus the fighters, you know, keep his fighters or his bombers from just strafing us over and over. Um, okay, then we have JG3 here down at Verena. What does JG3 have in it? We've got some BFs. Okay. I actually got a decent number of planes there. Now, there are little ways. If we look at the range circles, you know, they're only covering this little area. Uh, that's not really what how we want to do this. Okay, so let's take JG3. I w There's just no airfield out here. I mean, maybe we should have built one. Fair. That would probably be a fair point. We could put these guys in Vilnius, and then I think it would. You can see we have one, you know, squadron at least that gets out this far, but not really far enough. Let's center these guys up at Vilnius. So just hit Control, and then you can draw your own box. And there we go. He's going to transfer to Vilnius. Now, do we have enough here? These should all be single engine aircraft. So yeah, I think we should. Flexible asset priority, supply priority is one. Let's transfer immediately. All right, we may take some operational losses there, but okay. Uh, now, if we hit the range circles, you can see, eh, you know, these fighters don't get all the way, you know, covering all of this, but they cover more, certainly. So I think that's a better place for them. Uh, KG-55, the level bombers, well, you can see their range. Yeah, I mean, they can get to Moscow right now, so we're close to it. So that's fine. You can see the bases where they are, so KG-55 is okay. Uh, these should be dive bombers, I believe. SCH, are these fighter bombers, actually? No, they're TAC bombers. That's what I thought. Hmm. Okay, let's make sure they're all TAC bombers. Well, they are. Two, three, these are all... And these are Stukas down here. Uh, this FW-190G. Okay, I'm not as familiar with that, but okay. Uh, range circles. Let's check it out. They can get up into this area. Well, that's kind of that's a good thing. Uh, we need them up in this area, but let's make sure our JG-3 can help them out a little bit. And they can. And you can see how many planes can go out to these ranges, right? 16... 29 and 7 you can see the squadrons on top of the range circles they're very helpful uh, okay so that's all fine um kg3 is back here he's got you know 59 bombers 60 bombers or so that's uh perfectly okay and we've got about 120 bombers here well all right excellent uh cool all right so luflata one looks fine uh, as we get down here, JG-52, fighters, we've got 40 of these BF-109s. You can see, I mean, they get, you know, they cover a decent amount of the front. I think that's probably a good place to have them. Uh, the Stukas here, no, they're not Stukas, actually. Uh, but they are attack bombers. Well, that's a fighter bomber. Hold on. Uh, when I see these STG, uh, I generally think always think they're going to be TAC bombers, but these are fighter bombers. Now they are operating, that one's operating as a bomber group, that's operating as a bomber group, and that's operating as a bomber group, and that is how they're trained. Uh, okay, fine. I do you know, 83 bombers out here. We've got fighter support for them right there. Uh, I really wish this was called something else. I guess I could change these commands and make it, you know, something uh, that's more like level bombers. But I'm going to keep it there and just remember that. Now, this should be level bombers, KGs, and they are the 111Hs. You see the level bombers there. Uh, okay, we got like 61 of those. Do we have a, we certainly have more fighters down here somewhere. There they are. JG-54, only six there, 36 here. Now we could bring in some more fighters. That's not very many fighters to be covering up here. All, you know, all of this front. Uh, but again, we've been doing fine in the air. I mean, we've been dominating really when we actually get up in the air. Uh, Luflata 4, okay, do we have, yeah, we've got the transport group south down here. Actually, let's put transport group Mite. I don't know why I don't have that in Luflata 4. I think I should, and let's do that. Let's put that in Luflata 4. All right, so the, both the transport groups are there. Romanian Air Command, that has no planes in it. It's just sitting out here. 
Uh, okay, well, that's fine. El, uh, Luftwaffe KDO. Well, actually, though, I think. Let's take this off. Is there a counter for that? It's not. There is not. Um, what is it actually commanding? Because everything's, I mean, nothing. We show no planes in it. It's just weird that they have the badge up here then. Um, I thought Romanian high air was back here, but maybe that was Hungarian. Didn't I? See? I thought I saw it. It's here. Romanian Air Command. Okay, well, we've got a counter on the map for it, so I guess they put the badge up. Sure. Uh, KDO East, it's got some Hungarian bombers. It's got some Italian fighters. It's got a really small Hungarian fighter regiment of one plane. Uh, two transport planes. Oh, boy. That's all kind of a mess. I think before the end of this turn, I may bring any and all Hungarian, Italian, uh, air back. Maybe I will just go ahead and do that. You know, we've got some Hungarian fighter bombers, Hungarian fighters. It's a decent number of fighter bombers there. All right, 21. May as well get them out. Uh, we've got Hungarian recon you see here and some Italian recon. Why are we hanging on to Italian recon? Uh, they're making they're making good pasta back uh, back in the back, but. We need to get them out here. I mean, why? You know, why care about Italian recon? I, I certainly don't. Um, and so maybe we'll put them, you know, here and fly recon over here and see if the Soviets are bringing anything fun to the table. Okay, I think that does it for the air. Uh, get off there and let's once again start in the Crimea. Uh, I did this last time. And I'm liking it now. I know some of your senses are going haywire right now. You're like. Dojo, you always go north to south. Yes, I do, uh, but I, I'm finding in this game it's making more sense, at least right now, to go south to north because we're trying to fill holes in the south. We don't have anything coming down the Pripyat marshes. If I just back up, uh, everything from the, you know, we're filling in right here, but we don't have anything jumping the marshes. Here, I'm trying to get the Italians and Luftwaffe uh, up field units you know kind of in this whole area and if i can do that then i can release some germans just you know move a little south here I, i'm just thinking it's making more sense to go south to north so i'm going to continue doing it so let's go over here and we'll look at the kirch hey these guys ooh, they didn't get quite as much food this time now they're getting supplied directly out of Sevastopol. we did move one of the units last time we got about twenty-five thousand men out here Oh, uh, you know, their food's... Mm. I think I did, did I... No, their supply priority's three. I think I had it four there for a couple of turns, and maybe that's, you know, why they got built up a little bit faster. Uh, I've got them on a three now. Um, we do have this Romanian ID back here that's uh, sitting here unready. I could either take it off uh, and send it across, uh, yet another unit across, or I could, you know pop it up here and try to do something with it oh let's uh i'm sorry let's run our air doctrines uh, i almost forgot army group south that's fine army group antonescu oh luflata four i actually need to put uh, yeah i actually need to put army group a in that as well so let's bring this back up sorry it's very quick here uh let's put ground support and then let's uh do army group a Yes, yeah, so we've got Army Group South. Let's do Army Group A. We'll just confirm that everything will be be on auto otherwise. Okay, so Army Group A, Army Group South, and then otherwise it's auto. All right, let's run the air uh, directives. I almost forgot. I was like, wait a minute. Why are these guys not lighting up? Why can't I move them? Uh, that's why. All right, no sorties, it appears. Just not even on accident. Of course, we didn't order any, but you never know. It's still the beta version of the game. All right, uh, cool. All done there. And off we go. Well, first of all, why don't we go back here and just make sure. We've still got our FBD here. I like that. I think that makes sense. Um, 
because I mean we're getting and let's turn the logistics on now that we're down on the end of the ground and you can see how much freight we're getting in here to Costanta we need it now we are capped in some sense in that we can only get so much over here to Sevastopol so let's just see Sevastopol received 6650 it's now stored up 4302 but it did send out 4543 it lost 457 okay um unit truck use 2055 constanta sent over 6650 how much did costanta get uh, now that can't be right that's selena what are we what are you doing man okay there we go uh received 25,000 well we don't need that much so I mean I think the days of having to keep this here it sent out 28,974 where all did it go oh it went back this way you can see it starts trying to then go back out this way okay I think we can uh, whoever said that in the comments last time you were absolutely correct I don't think we need to keep that being a super depot if nothing else they've got 25,000 stored there uh, so that, you know, works. I mean, the Super Depot concept works, but I think we're pretty good there now. Uh, this is getting a lot, and maybe it should be, and maybe we should put this here on a depot. Uh, I don't want to go that far. We can't get there and still get off the train. Um, I'd like to put him right here, but I don't think we can get off the train here. If we look here, what's the rail yard? Railroad MP 89. Oh, okay, so it needs to. He needs to have 89 left to get off the train there. Uh, we could go to Foxana. So let's go here and make this a super depot for a minute. On train? No, it does say 100. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, we get to 100 there. 91. This is the only thing. This is where we would have to come into, right? Foxana. Well, let's do that. It's a little closer to the front. You can see the rail there. Uh, on train, off train. All right. So now we got a super depot here to push instead of the it, this having to go, you know, um, depot to depot from all the way down here. Got to start moving this up, my man. All right. Uh, logistics. Kemp Detachment Army. Uh, I assume that's what that means, Detachment Army. This is under Herzog, 7, 6, 5, and 6. Not terrible. That's okay. I'm not going to replace him. Um, wait a minute. Let's look at this for a second. Yeah, he's good for core or Army headquarters. We really need somebody that's an Army group headquarters. We do have the AP to do it if we want. 27 out. We could give someone a promotion but I'm not sure how much uh, Kempf is even gonna gather in here um, we're overstacked on sixth army as a matter of fact I'm gonna wait on Kempf but we got to remember we've got that back there but we were short an army here in the south for the most part uh, oh hey we got another FBD moving down here that we could move somewhere else why is he all oh, that's weird Oh, that's Foxana. That's the guy I just moved. Okay, well, that's called mass confusion. Um, this is here. We've got 318th here. Can we put him back in the reserves? Disband? I'm tempted to disband him. Uh, why am I not allowed? Is it because of where I am? I don't know. I'm going to move him over to Foxana. And... Okay, I'm going to keep trying to get him back to the reserves. If I can't get him back there, eventually I'm going to disband him. Uh, okay, so these guys back here, that should all be done. We've got no Hungarians. Uh, now let's get back over to the Crimea. My goodness, took a while. Okay, these guys are fine. This unit, uh, what do I want to do with it? He's going straight back to 4th Romanian. I do think I'll put him on the ships and get him out of here. I mean, we don't really need him over here, right? And this brings him back into Selena. Does he get hit? I mean, we've had things get hit out here a lot. No, he does not, and he makes it. Can he get off the ship? He cannot. He needs 130. He's got 119, but he's into port. Okay, so that's less Romanians over here eating all of our damn food. Um, okay, 4th Romanian Army. 
then we have these two units that are going directly back to it. Now, I was trying to rebuild these guys. I can put them in here, I guess. Uh, First Romanian Mountain. He's with Kempf. Let's get him out of here. No need for him to stay. Uh, although, I mean, we are going to be losing some Italians soon. We don't want to get everything out of here. Now, he gets over, and let's take him off the ships. Okay. Uh, we've really thinned this out out here. Well, because of that, I mean, I'm tempted to keep these guys around. Let's go sit them on the headquarter here right now. Uh, 15. Yeah, they're in command. Uh, 11 and 15. I mean, they're going directly back to an army. I get that, but they're in command. So this is in command. Then we've got 10 of 9 here under Corne, I believe. Yep, and he's our good Romanian general. 7, 6, 5, and a 6 on the ground. Uh, he's looking good. Support units, he does not have really any access to them. These guys have built up a level 2 fort now, and now we're building forts back here. I like it. Uh, nice building program, Romanians. These guys do not look great. We've got two unready units, 19th and 21st. Do I dare move them? Yeah, because I'm going to move 20th in here. I think that works. So let's take these guys, and, you know, if they can march, let's just march them. I don't want to really use up any rail, just in case the game ever does decide something to send something by rail. Now, it won't, I don't think, because that's a four and that's a four. Gosh darn it, I keep taking the logistics off. Four and four. But I keep hoping if something comes in there, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Uh, it's all dreams. Uh, two, okay, you're out. And then 53, 16. This is the, he's unready. He's on, was this ready? He was the only ready unit. Get him back up there. All right. Um, I could maybe, with this strong unit coming in, get all three out of here, potentially. Uh, you're out. Did I just do the exact same unit? Gosh, I gotta get my mind in the game here. Okay, unready. That's who's moving. There we go. Let's just get him moving back here. Um, and then ready, unready. Okay, so they're gonna move back here for now. And then this unit is gonna move up here. Okay. So ready with third mountain, and I'll probably get him out next time. This is a, uh, you know, kind of rebuilt unit. That's why I brought him back over here across the way. Uh, this unit, I mean, at least he's ready. Uh, 94, 93 on the withdrawal for the Italians. Got to keep that in mind. Uh, we took the Italian command out of here, didn't we? We did did and we but we've got the 53rd reserve corps he could start to command some italians if he wanted to or even romanians if he got that wild yeah let's uh, this is just an army headquarters i think what we'll do is put these guys in 62nd reserve let's do that uh, that would put him over by just one point, but I would rather they have German command. Now, Cornet is very good, don't get me wrong. Um, 62nd reserve. Now, that costs three for each, and so he's now 10 of nine. Seven, seven, seven. He's a little better, Hall it is, uh, than Cornet. Uh, but now that these guys are going back... I'm actually going to move Cornet over here and maybe get the Mountain Reserve out. Now, does he have... He does not have support units, and he can't get any. Okay. But I'm going to pull him out of here. Just fewer and fewer men all the time. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, can he get all the way in here? He can. I'm not sure if I'm going to you know, take him all the way back, but we'll see here. We also have this unit that's unready. There's no reason for him to be sitting out here. Let's try to get him out as well. And then we're going to move Cornet to here. These guys can actually go back to this other uh, Romanian command. What would that be? Fourth Romanian army. Okay. Let's put... Or we could put it in the Mountain Corps. Yeah, let's do that actually. Uh, Mountain Romanian, Mountain Romanian, 
Mountain Romanian. Okay, excellent. Uh, so all of this back here is now in. Now that goes directly back to the army. Where's Mountain Romanian sitting? He's 10 of 9. Okay, we'll just have that go back to the army. And then we have Corne getting all the rest of the troops here, other than the Italians. Um, so he's now 10 of 9. Corne can go up. He can take these guys. What is that, 11th? All right. So now this is an 11th Romanian Corps. First Guards will go into 11th Romanian Corps. Okay, so now all the Romanians I have out here are either uh, directly back to Corne, that's 6 of 9, or to haul it. Now, I don't want these things to be differently stacked, right? We don't want to take that core penalty, so I'm going to leave this as is. I think I'm going to take one or two of these units back over here, or maybe... 14th ID. He's on ships. He can't get off, but I'm going to rebuild him when he does get off next turn. Bring him over, and he'll start to replace the Italians. I'll put that in under Corne, and we'll have all of the Italians out. Now, not all those are withdrawing, and then 94, and then this doesn't withdraw for whatever reason. I don't know what I'll do with him. I mean, I may just move him over here into the Kerch and move these guys over, rebuild him. I'll do something. But for now, the Italians have to sit here. They're... Well, at least they're not unready. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to look for a silver lining there. We've got, like, well, that's a decent unit there. Um... 50, you know, it's 14,000 men, but this really tells the tale. 77, not terrible. They're actually much better than I thought. And 50 is actually better than I thought. Okay, so the Crimea, uh, we're going to roll with that. And now we're going to start moving up the map. Uh, we've got 34th Corps out here, and he's at 10 of 9. So at some point we need to look to offload, but I don't want to take a core penalty here. You see that the Soviets have moved something strong in here, and he's got an artillery piece back here. Okay, now they attacked here last time, and the Slovaks took some damage. Um, you can see these units are quite weak. 36% readiness. 34% readiness. Okay, now the problem is this guy withdraws next turn. Third motorized. We have got to get some infantry down here one way or another. Uh, what are these guys looking like? 65. I mean, they're starting to get worn down. They're starting to worry me a little bit. Uh, Flieger got beat down last time a little bit. So 94th is sitting in here looking really strong. If we take the logistics off, this is now starting to worry me a little bit. We've got to get some of those new divisions in. If we look here, he's an X, but this uh, 94th ID is 70 of it. Flieger is 54 of it, and they're getting a huge advantage being in town. We also have a lot attached to these guys, right? Uh, well, to the 94th anyway we do. We've got three full uh, battalions attached here. Sturm Infantry, Stug, Stug. Uh, they're in that zone. Okay, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot we can do there. Uh, we're going to have to bring in help. Did this rebuild? It did not. Fifth Mountain back here. He's on refit. He's just not getting any rebuild out here because we had too much rebuilding in the reserves, as was pointed out. Don't do that. Uh, 64, 61, and the Slovaks. Boy, oh boy. I am not confident about that, but we've got a problem here because we've got motorized. Um, he did not rebuild. No shocker there. But we could at least put him up here in town and maybe move Flieger over. He's on refit. Is he even ready? He is. Uh, he's showing, you know, no defensiveness for the most part. But I think I've got to move him up there, or I think I should anyway. Um, okay, let's do it. And then we can take Flieger then and go stack here. Now, that's part of that is this is moving out. But, I mean, this is not strong. Uh, it's really what I'm most worried about at this point in the game. Uh, what does this look like? He's at 8 of 9. Like I said, he's at 10 of 9. We can't add anything really more to that. Let's see what this one division is now. Uh, 54 for Flieger. 
29 for this division we moved in here and 70 for that. So if I move Flieger out of here, that's only a 99. But it's a level 3 forward. I, I think we'll be fine there. This level 3 helps as well. Uh, so I am going to take Flieger. That's part of the reason, and I do not want that combat prep to go out, but at least we, this, even though we moved it, still has 96, uh, 94th has 100 on combat prep. So I am going to move Flieger around here and put him there, because I think that hex is extremely vulnerable. Um, and I, instead of having this um, go back to 35th, eh, maybe I'll leave that the same. Maybe I will. Okay. Maybe I'll, I'll leave that the same. Uh, these guys are both in 41st Panzer. So, I mean, we are going to take a penalty here. I can't believe this is going to withdraw. Gosh darn, that hurts. Now, we've got good Hungarian armor here. If we look at the defensiveness, um, 15 for the motorized. It's 23 for the armor. And then Flieger gives us a big whopping one. Gosh darn it. Stop doing that. Flieger gives us a big whopping nine. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, that's not great. Now, he won't, well. Oh, you, 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 oof. That's not great. We got to pray that we hold on there. These guys are at least both ready. And that's the good news. The bad news is they're not very strong. 11 defense there. I mean, it's 22 together. They're both 11s. 22. 24 now we're along here to 44th core 44th core is under martinick he's got all the motor or he's got all the support units he needs um as does grossner or he should let's just make sure yeah he's got everything he needs okay uh 41st panzer out here under reinhardt has a lot of support units okay that's good Everything is in command. Fourth Panzer Army is sitting here. What's the name of this town? Vaslui? Sure. Okay. Uh, this motorized, that withdraws on turn 94. I mean, that's just killing us. Uh, at least there, we've got five more turns to deal with that. But that he comes off next turn. And these guys have completely, for the most part, kind of rebuilt out here. Um Ooh, Luftwaffe and 85. Ah, that's ugly. Uh, at least this motorized is not going to withdraw on us. He's got 10 of 9. This is 8 of 9 under Hase. Great General Hase. Uh, wait a minute. Let's look at this for a second, though. Does it make sense? Hase 3 mech, and I've got a motorized in here. That does not make sense. Okay, uh, he is not going to give good leadership to that mech unit. Um, this is 14th Panzer Corps. Now, I could give it to the Panzer Corps, but I get a mismatched stack here. Would I rather... What do we have here? This is Schultz. I mean, he's only a 5 on the mech, but he's very good on the ground. I did put this mech unit in here, Viking. Ooh, we're going to have to figure that out. Uh, because I don't want those mech units under guys that are only, you know, sporting a three or a five on their mech score. Seven sevens, Fred or Pico is good at everything. Um, interesting. All right, let's look at Sixth Army very quickly. He's at 28 of 27. So Kempf doesn't really need to come here. <sighs> this hex is going to keep me up at night. Luckily, we brought a lot of divisions in, so we're going to bring a lot of those south. Uh, I've been flooding the zone in the north and in the center. I think it's start to, time to bring things to the south uh, to replace motorized and uh, also get motorized off the line. We could also take, potentially take 9th Panzer here, which is built a little bit, and put it in a nice fort level over here. Maybe replace that after it goes. Well, I don't know. We'll look at that further. Okay, uh, so yeah, I guess I just didn't realize Hase was so bad on the mech because I do have this motorized. I want to figure that out before the turn's up. Uh, uh, Nering is very good with the mech. And as you see here, he's got the 9th Panzer in reserve. He's got the 123rd ID and he's got 24th Panzer. Now, neither one of these is that strong, to be quite honest. Together... There are 36, so we go 32, 28. I mean, luckily, we're talking all level three forts around here. Um, the 
uh, aforementioned uh, Schultz is out here. Schultz! Uh, he is 51st core, 8 of 9. That all looks good. Look at this motorized unit. At least 16th doesn't get pulled out of here. He's looking like a superstar along here. 85 on the defense, stacked by himself. And then we have... Ah, this is where maybe we get somebody. Although, no, the Romanians aren't strong enough to stand by themselves. Uh, we've got the Luftwaffe field division back here. We could stack that with something just to have a few extra men. We've got that mountain division back there, but I don't think there's a whole lot we can do that. 48th core here. Uh, Fred or Pico, like I said, very good. And he's got all of his support. Well, doesn't have them all. Let's give him, uh, these are crappy looking, but let's get them out on the map. And then let's put a motorized mixed black in there as well. Make sure he's locked. He is. Let's go back here. Make sure, whoops, that's not a headquarters. Nearing locked. Should never unlock these. Even if you're, even if you're thinking about sending them back to the reserves, because it can cause a real problem. Fourth core locked. Okay. I think these are fine. We know they had support units, so they didn't flow back up. Now, we have fairly decent Romanian cavalry. We've also got fairly decent Romanian uh, infantry here. That's an eight. Uh, you know, it's not nothing. Uh, let's put it that way. 216th ID. Again, these guys are just not in great shape. 12, that's Romanian. 11th Panzer's not in great shape. I've got a... Whoa, a lot of secondary rail out here. Okay. Uh, this cavalry corps. Well, not trying to move all three of them, guys. Just trying to move that one potentially. Uh, he's sitting here. I'm going to return these guys to the head. Where are they trying to go exactly? Maybe build the depot out here. Is that what they're trying to do? Okay. Let's look at our logistics. Yeah, I guess, you know, there is a depot here right next to the Soviets, but it connects. Um, I guess he's trying to build out to here, maybe. I guess that could be useful. We don't have any, you know, I mean, it's back here, but we may as well put it up here if we can. The, kind of the rule of thumb as we played the game that we figured out is you just need a depot within three of your troops because then it will uh, transport by horse. So this would make sense. I mean, one, two, three gets you to here, but these guys don't really have a depot. So if they want to go here, that's fine. I'll keep that Romanian cavalry there. Fourth Panzer Army, 26 of 27. That looks fine. Uh, here's a Panzer Corps. Von Vettengoff is sitting back here. We've got Romanian Army and a Romanian Corps. This Romanian Corps is not really doing anything, but... As we move up the map, we may need him for something. There's a remaining core that goes six of nine, and then uh, the aforementioned von Vettengoff, who has some of this. Uh, oh, that's going to six Romanian army. Okay, or six remaining core. Interesting. Why does it show that? Oh, I see. Von Vettengoff has these guys out here. Uh, okay, that's fine. As long as he has his support units, he's locked. Recon, we've got artillery, we've got flak, pioneer, nebel Werfers. I like it. Okay. Um, and then this goes back to six Romanian quarter. Okay. Let's look at the Romanian uh, support units. Assigned support units. Yep, nothing to get. Nothing to get, unfortunately. I've got him on a zero, so would he get anything? He's going to pass it back up. They're on a two. The Panzer Corps on a three. That's what we like to see. This remaining core two. That remaining lots of just remaining cores hanging out here. They're they're all O of nine here uh, for leadership, but they're just sitting on that. Uh, Army Group South is back here hiding. I guess I you know what's he up to? Not a whole lot. Let's tr turn this back to movement points. Just make sure those guys can't move. They cannot. I don't think I'm going to move a damn thing back down here. Now, it's dangerous by Odessa. Uh, almost as dangerous as East Kiev. Uh, let's see. We've got the Arab Special here. We have another Romanian cavalry that's sitting here. We've got a level 3 fort. Uh, if we go back to defensiveness, 55, 37 on the double stack there. Not great, not terrible. 42 there. As we move on up, a uh, third Panzer Corps could use maybe a handoff to somebody 
7 of 9 here. Okay. Uh, why do you have... Oh, I see. I didn't want to... Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This third... He's going back to 3rd Panzer Corps. Let's actually put him back to 14th Panzer Corps. And then they'll both... That's what I was trying to figure out last time. Hold on. Was that 14th or 24th? Let's make sure we get this right. 24th. Okay. Okay. My bad. Uh, 24th Panzer Corps. So we're going to go in there. Boy, a lot of this is just shuffling commands. They, he's still in command, 5 of 5. But now both of these Panzer Corps out here have 9 of 9. Uh... Ooh, quit doing that. We gotta lock you. Uh, he needs to pull down, even if it's crap. We gotta get it down here. M motorized mix, that's fine. Uh, so for von Schweppenberg, I knew there was one up here that wasn't locked appropriately, and he was the one. There's locked. Uh, the penal bicycle recon is out here. That's fun. Uh, howitzers. Oh, I see. Siege mortar. Howitzer. Let's give one of these to the twenty. Fourth, whoops, there we go. Let's give you to the 24th Panzer Corps. All right, so, you know, we're just gonna pass him over. Well, let's see first Panzer Army. Does it have any support units? No, okay. As a matter of fact, yeah, I'll keep that there. Uh, all righty then, so there's all of this. I mean, there just wasn't a whole lot to move. I, I'm concerned. Uh, you can see my brow furrowed. Well, you actually can't see it today, but you can probably hear it. Uh, as we get into this section right here, I think we're going to call this an episode. We're coming right up on the hour. Uh, we will be back live streaming tomorrow. We're going to try to get all the way through what's now become the Minsk Bulge. Uh, and then we'll come back on two days after that and we'll go through the north and turn the turn. So we're going to try to turn the turn every third episode. Uh, we're going to do two on, one off. Uh, and the vast majority of those I'll try to live stream. Just depends what we're up to uh, around the house. Uh, baby on the way. Had to go hear her heartbeat today. So anyway... You guys are great. If you like the video, like it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you want to, membership. Uh, but thank you for all the support. About to go over 5,000, so I appreciate it. Hopefully, you're really enjoying this series. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm glad that the AIs kept us on our toes. I mean, that's through our own you know, mistakes and learning and moving through the game. Uh, but, you know, right now, I'm hopeful. We'll see. We'll see. Hope springs eternal. So anyway, you guys be good. Uh, Strategy Gaming Dojo. Till next time. See you tomorrow. Have a good one.